okay so now let's go to, to the back end and uh, create uh, uh, certain routes for the users such that they have the ability to log in and uh, uh, you know register okay so we'll be creating that in this video okay so now let's uh, for, in this video we are just going to create the login and uh, later we are going to implement the uh, feature such that a user can register as well all right so now let's go to a server directory and uh, let's uh, uh, create a um, controller okay for the users so let's call it user controller okay and later we'll be creating the um, routes for the users and uh, going to link it up with the server.js all right so now let's uh, import uh, various things okay so i'm just going to copy from the product controller okay uh, let's copy the async handler okay which we might need and uh, also i'm going to import the user model all right so user user model which is coming from uh, dot slash um, no dot dot slash models slash user model all right so uh, actually it's not user model it's just a uh, user okay so now let's go ahead and create a function uh, for logging in the users okay so const uh, login user you can also call it auth user all right so auth will be implementing it uh, later okay so the name uh, shouldn't conflict to that so i'm calling it uh, login user and uh, this will take in the request and uh, the response and remember we need to wrap it inside the async handler okay so let's do that so wrap this in async handler so that uh, we don't have to write the try catch if you remember from the previous videos all right so now let's uh, do a simple response here okay so i'm going to uh, send a response okay i'm going to call it uh, res dot send and uh, just pass in uh, uh, let's say login okay so just so that we uh, have something okay um, just we just want to test this if this is actually working and then we'll proceed okay so let's go ahead and export uh, this login user okay and uh, which is equal to this um, um, just like that okay so let's save this and uh, we, let's uh, go to our uh, routes folder and create uh, routes for our users so user routes dot js and uh, there i am going to copy some of the imports okay so i'll just copy this whole thing okay and just paste it and uh, this is not coming from product controller so let's import it from uh, the user controller that is um, login user okay so that is coming from user controller and remember we need to add in the extension of .js and uh, now let's uh, create a route router dot route so this will be a route for the slash okay like this and uh, then we want to uh, hook up the login user okay so whenever we hit this route we are going to uh, call this login user controller okay that we just created and now let's uh, export default router all right so that's done and now let's finally uh, import this in our server.js okay so we have this actually i guess we don't need this anymore so let's get rid of that and uh, let's uh, import user routes okay so that is coming from uh, dot slash routes slash user routes dot js all right so now let's uh, go to this product routes yeah just uh, right underneath this i am going to say app dot use and uh, pass in the route of slash api slash users okay whenever we hit this route okay then we are going to uh, call this function okay that we uh, call this router okay that that is this uh, user routes okay so user routes so that's done all right so now let's uh, test it out let's uh, uh, run our server okay let's go to our uh, server we don't need to uh, start our client okay so npm run dev and uh, we have an error here uh, again the same one i guess i need to uh, 
add in the extension of .js okay so hope that works okay so now let's uh, open our postman okay so i have already created a folder for uh, spark tech youtube okay so we, these are the various requests that we'll make so that we don't have to like uh, type it out manually okay and also i've created an environment variable okay so uh, actually i forgot to um, mention this in the previous video when we configured postman so you can just go to this environment variables and you can just add in a, a variable so you can just go to edit and just add in a variable and just give it a initial value and the current value of uh, localhost 5000 okay that's where our server is running okay so that's done and let me just close this so that's so, so that we don't have to you know uh, write, type out the entire url okay so we can just uh, uh, encode this within this uh, environment variable okay so now let's uh, create uh, another request so we can go here and click on add request and i'm going to call this um, uh, okay so this is a post request okay so we'll be getting some information from the uh, body so let's call it post slash api slash um, users okay slash uh, login all right so that's the api endpoint and i'm going to change this to post so we have various other methods so you can uh, choose the one which is appropriate okay so otherwise it won't work and i'm going to use the url of slash api slash um, users slash login all right and uh, here i just want to just uh, send this and have a look at uh, what we get okay so let's send this okay so it says not found let's see uh, actually this leads to be slash uh, login okay so my bad i just forgot that and now let's uh, test it out okay once again Okay, so I don't know why it's not working. So let's have a look. Actually, we didn't uh, define the method uh, to call this function with. All right. So this is not the way. Actually, I totally messed it up. So router dot route. So if we hit this route, then we want to make a post request. Okay, not like this. Post request to that is the login user. Okay. So that is the controller that we imported from. Okay. So now let's uh, test it out. So click on send okay there we go we have this uh, simple text of login because that is what we are actually sending over here okay within our uh, uh, login user controller all right so since this is a post request as we defined over here we can also send in some data okay so if you go to a postman we can uh, also send in some data okay so we can just uh, encode some values over here and later uh, we'll be uh, linking it to our application such that if they fill the form okay with the uh, uh, proper details okay then we'll get the post request also with the uh, entered information like uh, login with uh, email and password the user actually entered all right so like that okay so for now let's uh, test it out so we get this uh, all the information from uh, this request object which has a property of body okay so let's uh, console log that and see what it uh, actually returns okay so rec dot body okay and uh, here we need to pass in some information okay so i'll just uh, type in uh, something like uh, email okay and uh, set this to john at the rate email.com and also the password okay so i'm just going to say one two three four five six okay so this is what we set in the earlier video for this uh, particular email okay so now let's um, send this and uh, let's see uh, in our console what do we actually get okay so we so this actually keeps uh, going on so uh, since it's a uh, you know we don't actually do anything right so we just need to have a look at the console and uh, we get undefined that is because we need to configure uh, something called as body parser such that we can uh, accept and send json responses all right so this is a middleware that we need to conf configure within our root of our backend so let's go ahead and uh, do that uh, and i'm just going to um, go right below this uh, app okay that we configured using uh, express so i'm going to say app app dot use okay that is coming from express dot what is that um, um json okay so which is a method we need to call it okay so this will uh, this is basically a body parser which will uh, send and uh, accept json responses okay and also we need to add in another uh, middleware that is app dot use express dot 
URL encoded and uh, we just want to set this to an object where which is extended and set this to true all right so this is nothing uh, else to do you just need to configure this in order to uh, you know send and accept json responses so this is uh, nothing but a body parser component so we just need to uh, try this once again right now and uh, let's uh, make the request and have a look at our console okay so let's send this okay so nothing's gonna happen i'm just gonna cancel it and have a look there we go we have the email that is john at email.com that we entered over here and also the password okay so that is one two three four five six all right now let's uh, destructure the email and password that we get from this reg dot body all right so i'm just gonna get rid of this and uh, call this uh, const which is email and password okay which is coming from reg dot body okay and uh, we are just going to check okay not email dot password and uh, we are just going to uh, uh, find in our database based on the email that um, the user has typed okay so if the email does not match in our database that means that he is not a registered user and we just want to throw some error all right so now let's uh, find that user based on the mongoose model that we created so i'm just going to call it user and set this equal to await remember all mongoose functions are asynchronous and uh, we just need to find okay so it has a method called find okay so find okay so based on the email that we enter so email which is coming from the email that uh, we actually get from uh, here from request.body so since this is es6 we can just uh, if the uh, if the properties match the same then we can just uh, do this okay so let's save and we just need to make this function asynchronous async all right so that's done and now let's have a look okay at the user okay so let's first uh, check if the user actually exists okay so if there is a user then we want to send in some amount of information okay to the client side so that, that is rest.json and uh, we just want to send in the underscore id which is coming from user dot underscore id and uh, then the name that is user dot name okay and uh, then the email which is the user dot email and then the we do not want to send to send the password okay so and also the is admin okay so if the user is an admin or not okay so which is coming from user dot is admin okay so these are the entries that we uh, have in our database so we are sending this in the form of a response all right so if there is no user okay so else then we want to um, set this to a status code of 401 which means unauthorized okay and we want to throw new error so we already created this error handler in the previous videos okay so i guess this should uh, this should follow in here and uh, okay something is wrong um okay so there we go and we want to throw an error saying invalid email or password okay we do not want the user um, to know which is uh, actually wrong the email or password okay just for security reasons okay so that's done and uh, yeah so now let's go ahead and test it out so now let's go to postman and uh, just uh, test it out so we have all the fields uh, given and uh, let's send this okay so for some reason we are getting an empty object so what's the reason uh, any errors no um what is wrong uh, actually this has to be find one all right so if it is only finding just um, only one document within our database so we need to use find one and not many because that will return an array and this is just a single object okay so let's uh, test that out yeah there we go we get the response okay just as we expect along with the id name email and is admin so that's what we are sending in over here and let's now purposely create an error like let's say an email that does not exist okay so let's send this and see 
okay yeah there we go we get an error of invalid email or password and uh, yeah there we go since we are in development we are getting the stack as well uh, if you we are in production we do not want to give any hints to the user what is actually going on going wrong all right so now let's uh, check the password if the password entered is uh, correct or not so remember uh, in the previous video we actually has the password in our um, users.js so like uh, bcrypt.hash okay so we cannot uh, directly compare with this value because this is a very uh, uh, encoded value so we need to use uh, another property from bcrypt package so that it will compare the entered password with the password that is hashed in the database all right so now let's uh, uh, now let's go to the user model and let's create a um, method over there okay so user model we can also do it um, within this um, user controller but this is a, just a cleaner way of doing it okay so now let's uh, call this user schema that we actually defined it over here which is the entire schema of the user and this has a property of dot methods okay so that we can create a method so methods and uh, dot we, we can call this anything let's say match password okay and uh, set this equal to a function okay and uh, we are using asynchronous function and remember we need to use that this keyword okay so we so if you know about javascript that this keyword in an arrow function or uh, like it returns undefined so it doesn't point to the right object okay so, so that's why using this uh, function syntax so let's call this uh, enter password so let's give it a clear name okay so that we don't get confused with with uh, this password or that password all right so we just want to return uh, await okay so this is a, a bcrypt uh, coming from bcrypt pack, package okay so bcrypt so actually we need to import that so import bcrypt from bcrypt js all right so now let's um, bcrypt dot compare okay this has a method of dot compare and this compares the entered password that we will be sending in okay and uh, and we need to um, we need to check the password if this uh, password okay which is in the database actually matches okay so this refers to this entire uh, object okay that uh, the user is actually there in the database okay so we can access this uh, property using this dot password okay so that's done and uh, yeah so now let's go to our uh, controller so this time we also want to check for the password okay so also i'm going to use another condition here says so that we can you uh, make use of the property that we defined okay in our model that is user dot match password okay so this has to be async uh, asynchronous because this returns uh, uh, a promise okay so we need to await that and we need to match the password and we are going to send in the password that the user has entered all right so as simple as that so this password will be uh, grabbed within this method okay so this entered password and uh, it is going to compare within the password which is in the database so it will return true if the password matches and it will return uh, false okay so if that doesn't match so if this uh, thing is false so uh, this uh, condition will fail and it will throw an error saying that invalid email or password right okay so i hope that's clear so now let's uh, test it so i am going to give some wrong password okay so first let's give the right password and just see if it works okay still it says uh, invalid email or password okay i need to uh, my bad i need to remove this uh, uh, wrong email which i purposely did that and uh, yeah there we go our password is uh, correct and we are getting all of the details that means that the user is logged in so if i type in a wrong password okay and send this we get that uh, email is email or password is uh, invalid all right so that's working fine okay so everything is uh, working fine our um, login handler is complete so in the next video we'll be sending in the token along with the user uh, information okay such so that we know that the uh, login user is authorized and also is able to you know access uh, certain routes okay so they not want any uh, user to uh, access any page which is not authorized so that will be uh, taken care by the token that we send in within the response okay once the user is logged in okay so let's do that next